for the last time, no. Hey, welcome to the... No, it's not continuing the winemaking series. No, gee, it's Tuesday. They've got to retrain them. What did you do, go out on a vacation for two days it's, or something? Uh, I'm going next week, but it's um, the uh, March selections for the classic Wine of the series. Month Classic Series. Got okay, a great and, I got, lineup. and I got a question for you. What? What was the Wine of the Month Club selections 40 years ago? You remember? <laughs> well, let's see. 40 years ago was 1974. Wow, that was I was uh, a sophomore in high school, and my dad goes, Hey, Paul, you know what we're going to select? We're going to select the 69 Fremark Abbey Cab, and we're going to select the Riesling. From? Aha! <laughs> <laughs> you look Kaiser Stuhl from Australia. Two ninety nine dollars a bottle. Fremark Abbey Cab. I didn't catch that. Six Kaiser Stuhl from Australia. So uh, that's funny because I just I did I looked it up today. I, so did I. <laughs> um, so you but, had you had a deep tissue massage, I had. Oh, yeah. So why don't you show the crowd what she happened? Found, she, she found it, and this was a week ago. <laughs> I don't know what I haven't even looked after yesterday. You know, she found nerves I didn't even know I had. That really hurts. But why did you do that? Well, because I've had some backache for like a year, and I finally decided to do something about it. Did you say, can you switch over to Swiss <laughs> Swiss massage, please, or <laughs> Swedish massage? I, I take a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> okay, this is the Red Bandana, which is a uh, household blend of several different houses, I think. I'm yeah, that's great. You know, this is fun. This is just fun to drink. Let's have a little residual sugar in it, so it's sort of like that. These Kenson Sink blends are, are kind of cool. 2011. First of, first of all, they come up with some of the goofiest names. I mean, come on, Red Bandana. What has that got to do with wine? All right? I mean, really, what has it got to do with wine? And it looks like it's a it's a silkscreen label, too. This is expensive. But, you know, I get a little bit of residual sugar, so it gives it kind of a up for fun. So you want to put it with a nice tomato sauce dish or something, but you get a, lots of fruit for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I think this is what Syrah. It must be Syrah, right? And Zen and a few other things, and for sure, this is you know, Zen. this is really fun. You know, it's kind of interesting. You know, you take all the all the components that go into these wines, and separately, they're, they're not that good. And then you put them together, and they actually the whole is greater mm. than the sum of its parts. It's actually changing now as we're tasting it. And so are we. Yeah, I'm changed. I'm a little older than I was. Yeah, you're standing here with you. Okay, twelve ninety nine on the shelf, seven ninety nine on a reorder price, and I'm giving it a ninety four. Yeah, I go ninety four on this. I think it's really good. So, um, so, um, so you must be this. I'm surprised you didn't wear black today. Well, I sort of am. I mean, well, it's kind of gray because <laughs> it's, it's not gray. that big a deal for you. But you know, what's his name died? The guy from the dating game. Yes, I saw that today. <laughs> was that the guy that hosted the show you were? Yes, he, of course he did. I mean, this was 1967 for crying out loud. You know, I, I had to say, Ed, you know, I was I was a young stir, but uh, and I don't know a whole lot about. I think we're gonna have to do like one of these winemaker interviews with just you and me. And I'm gonna find out some of these things, hidden things about you, like. I was on the dating sh dating game with Steve Martin. Well, you know, it was really interesting in the obituary today in the L.A. Times. They mentioned some of the people that, that had been on the dating game, like Steve Martin. I was really upset they didn't mention me. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, I certainly would have put you in that category, Steve Martin. But he was on it twice, it looks like. It looks like he won it twice. I don't, that I don't know. I was on it three times, actually. I won the third time. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm learning more every day. <laughs> But that's but the one that he the, the little thing that you told me to go to YouTube had two clips of Steve Martin with two different bachelorettes. So I'm assuming oh, oh, okay, then that yeah, okay. Uh, but you got but when they pulled out of the first one, yeah, that was the first the second, one he was on. No, yeah, the second no the in well in the YouTube thing is the second. One, okay, so. yeah. Ed goes like this. Oh darn it! Yeah, she was really pretty too. It was Dean Martin's daughter, Dina, Martin, oh. <laughs> who won who 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 picked Steve. Oh, well, that's a, well, it. Sounds like it's rigged. Martin and Martin. Yeah, I yeah. mean you know, so. Now here's a fun thing. Uh, is, what? Ferengo Pinot Grigio. Ferenzo, yeah, but it's the, uh, it's uh, it's domestic Pinot Grigio, and it's from Mendocino County, which is kind of unusual, and it's got that wonderful Pinot Grigio color. Well, it really does. You know, I mean, uh, Pinot Grigio is the Italian uh, name for Pinot Gris, and Gris means gray, mm -hmm. and and the reason why they call it Pinot Gris is because the the skin is actually kind of gray, yeah. And if you, it's, as opposed to white, and if you if you get a little skin contact, you can get this sort of greenish tinge uh, in the in the wine, and it's just, grayish. Well, it's it's so this is it's, it turns out to be this is a little more, more extracted than some. So yeah, this is dry got some or gut to it. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. That is absolutely delicious. All flint and. Uh, 
perfectly dry. Well, cooler cool. climate, so it's got a little more acidity, and it's really nice. It's at thirteen ninety nine on the shelf, six dollars and ninety nine cents. I don't, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it, Ed. I don't either. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I, I don't know how you wait, do it, Paul. Wait a minute. I, it was a 95 I'm, for me. I, I'm an, I, I was going to do a 95. The nose is, you know, it's changing, too. Mm. That's really fun. Really nice wine. So, Ed. So, Paul. No! Now, no! last month, I got to write about... Um, Paul, Pat Paulson, and this month I get to write about Kurt Lorenzi, who's a winemaker in Echelon. And Kurt helped me put together my very first wine 40 years ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. Actually, it was, was actually it the free market, 30, it's the 38. It was about 38 years ago because it was a it was a, a, a 2000 no 2000 a 1984 Chardonnay that was featured in the Wine of the Month Club. Wow. Matter of fact, this is really good. Um, oh, yeah, these guys, these guys really, well, Kurt's a great winemaker. He really is. He's really good. So first, I have a gift to you from pa, from Pat Paulson's mm -hmm. son, Montgomery, which is a, a book from 1968 as a uh, uh, Pat Paulson's run for president. It's some right. funny pictures in there. Very funny stuff. And so I'll give that to you before you go. Great. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Speaking of 1978, um, my wife was kind enough to put on a little, host a little charity thing at our house. She's responsible for a very big charity event last Saturday. But she has the women come over on Tuesday, and they kind of wrap up everything, and then they get going. And so we were kind enough to get a book. A woman brought us a book and saying, thank you for hosting the party and stuff. You know what it was? No. The 1978 copy of Wines of California from Robert oh. Balser. And it's like she took it off her shelf at their house and said, here, we'll take this as a gift. I mean, half of those wines have to be gone by now, right? Um, well, they sure are, but it's kind of fun to watch when you look at the pictures of some of these people that are in there. You know, I mean, these these pictures are are almost forty years old, so everybody in there is almost forty years older. The photography's worse, the printing's worse, and I'm looking uh, at it. I go, I said, don't don't bring us a gift. You're gonna bring us something that you took. Off. Literally, she had to take it off her shelf. Well, Where are you gonna buy a book like that? I don't think it's been out of print for probably twenty five years. In the ages are the things. Thing. Anyway. Echelon blend, $19.99 on the shelf, $7.99 on a reorder price, and I'm, I'm doing a 95 on this, too. Yeah, it's a 95, and it's uh, you know, considerably different than the blend of um, from the Red Bandana, yeah. and it doesn't have that little bit of sugar, so it's a lot drier, but, boy, it's got a ton of character. Yeah, a lot of flavor, a lot of fruit. There's going to be Cabernet. There's a cabin there and there's some Zin, I think. Yeah. They didn't tell us. No, no more, more kitchen sink, you know. This is our, you know, we, we, we did two months of Chardonnay, now we're doing kitchen sink wines. Yeah. But here's a fun thing. This is a Riesling, German Riesling, called Stone, Stone Fruit. Fruit. Rieslings are popular again. I'm seeing a lot more than I used to. Oh, they're very popular, and they should be because it's a great grape. It's my favorite mm. grape. Classic really. nose. This is a classic nose. And Stone Fruit, meaning the peaches and the apricots and the nectarines of the world, and that's kind of what you get yeah. out of this nose, right? It's really nice. But it's a little drier than most. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, it, and normally I don't like totally dry Rieslings from Germany. Other areas like Alsace, Australia makes great dry Rieslings, right. California, but normally the, 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 the acidity in German wines are so high because mm -hmm. of the latitude that they really need uh, a little touch of sugar. But this is pretty dry and it's delicious. It's really good. Because it's from a warmer fruit. area too, the Rheinfalls. The, the, maybe the fruit impressions are giving a little bit of sugar in there, but. I, don't uh, think I, I fell in love with it. I tasted it, and I still couldn't believe that we were going to feature it for fourteen ninety nine as a retail and more for six ninety nine. That's a steal. That's a great how bottle. You, of wine. How do you get it from Germany here in this quality? Well, that's because they put it in the wrong bottle. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know that's the new thing, right? Well, I don't know. I haven't. I don't think I've seen too many German recently from. You they know. put them in a. It should be in a Hawk bottle, which is a fourteen inch tapered shoulder. Yeah, but like, they like but, shoulders. But they're hard. They're hard for you to ship in your boxes. So they did this just for you, Paul. Mm -mm -mm. And that's our show for today. Oh, I'm giving this a ninety six actually because I love. I like it too. Six ninety six. I keep yeah. trying to taste more of it. I keep well, trying to I, taste you more. know, you don't have to no. dump it. Well, you you can. It's really okay. And, and that's our show for today. That is March. 2014, two years after the world ended, and we're still doing this.